Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I think we are live. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to try your trick and see what happens. <laughs> Yay. Look at that. I love it. Oops. There we go. Perfect. 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 Oh, my gosh. I forgot my little handy. I've got this little plastic holder. I don't know what to do with it. Holds my phone so I can see. That's all right. Okay. Oh, this is what a day. What a week. Oh, my goodness. Um, so to continue with our month of gratitude, our topic today is how gratitude can help shift our mood, our mindset, our feelings, uh, the, a perspective when things don't go as planned or maybe unexpected situations arise on us. I'm Footy, coming to you live with our daily cup of tea, which I left in the kitchen. I know what? I'm going to grab this cup. <laughs> this is a gift for somebody. Hey! <laughs> I did leave my new tea in there. Um, oh, my goodness. I'm alive, ladies. I'm alive. So, as Al Roker would say, how are you doing in your neck of the woods? <laughs> because we have had it. Um, I am grateful that the Hurricane Nicole didn't do too much damage to our home and our community. So, if you have your gratitude journal... Um, Jot down five things you are grateful for today that happened today for you. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy. Just And then post one of them. Post one grateful, something that you were so thankful about. Uh, last week, I, um, I read my gratitude story from the book, Women Like Me, sharing words of, there we go of gratitude. And um, I love this book. I just enjoy reading all the stories. It's it's so just fascinating. And so like I told you last week, Julie Fairhurst um, compiled all these stories from all these amazing women. And uh, you can still get it on Amazon. And I'll post that link again for you. And then if you do want an autographed copy, from me privately message me and if you want one from sabrina you can uh contact sabrina because she would be more than happy to take care of that i'm sure i forgot to ask you if that was okay <laughs> <laughs> sure i have some free coffees <laughs> I, can, I can sign your name <laughs> yeah you can sign my name sure absolutely because <laughs> i have to ship it from canada <laughs> I just thought of that after I said that. I was like, oh, maybe that wouldn't work. I know. Uh, so, so this evening we are so lucky, you know, to have our self-care strategist guru for women over 50, Sabrina Lambert, who is going to read her story. Um, and if you happen to have a copy of the book, it's on page 67. Um you live on the Upper West Canada side, right? Correct. Hope. I'm in BC, a little town. Well, it's a city now, Chilliwack. We're in the mountains. Um, we've got snow all around us, but no snow in town. So we're good. <laughs> I don't miss that cold. <laughs> Something we're grateful for. There's no snow on the ground yet. There you go. <laughs> you can always see the sunshine somewhere. Oh, my exactly. gosh. That, was, that happened today for me. I, I walked. And it was drizzling all the way up to my marker. And on the way back, the sun was coming out. I thought for sure I'd see a rainbow, but it was short-lived. Um, yeah. So if you are looking for um, self-care nuggets and advice, you can find Sabrina on Facebook. She has a great Thrive More Age Less Self-Care Mastery Facebook group that may interest you. Um, and here she shares her valuable self-care wisdom about, you know, about growing your mindset, you know, thinking clearly. 
and um, and we're not ready for the rocking chair, which I just love that tagline. You know, it's just great. And I'm sure, Sabrina, you're going to tell us more about that. Um, but you want to read your story? Absolutely. So first of all, I want to thank you so much. I so appreciate you, uh, Linda, for having me on and giving me this chance to read my story. That uh, I joined a whole bunch of other lovely lady authors to uh, bring this, you know, put this uplifting book together. So um, now my story is a little bit about um, my life and um, it's fairly recent. It happened to me about five years ago. So um, my story starts out with a quote from Germany Kant. Any day above ground is a good day. Before you complain about anything, be thankful for your life and the things that are still going well. So it was deja vu, back in the hospital bed for a second time in my life. I waited for details about my condition. As the surgeon came to discuss my pending operation, my husband supportively squeezed my hand, yet the furrows in his forehead betrayed his worry. The surgeon looked younger than I expected, so I secretly hoped that he meant to, uh, I secretly hoped that that meant he had the most current knowledge about my disease and that he had the skill to best remedy the hot mess inside my abdomen. Mitigating expectations, the doctor explained, until I get a look at what needs to be removed, I won't know if there is enough organ to reattach. An external appliance could be required. The thought of a colostomy could not become my focus prior to surgery. Instead, I felt blessed to have access to excellent med medical care and my skilled surgeon. My preference would be not to need one, I said. However, I trust you will make the best decision once you see inside. I will be grateful to get well and enjoy my life again either way. The doctor nodded and seemed satisfied that I understood the possible outcomes. His smile reassured me that he expected it to go well. My toughest experience with the surgery was observing the angst and fear that my husband suffered on my behalf. Nine hours later, I awoke in recovery. Although groggy and attached to the many tubes strictly designed to support healing, I knew gratefully in my core that all would be well. Love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. I wonder if anybody has, Linda Nelson is on. Hi, Had Linda. <laughs> nice to see you at, here. Yeah, I had to look it up because it says Facebook user on my end. Um, so, oh, and Julie Fair, Fairhurst is on. Awesome. Well. Yay. So do any of you ladies have any questions for Sabrina? You can just type them in if you have something you want to ask her. Um, I really While we're waiting, I just want to say that gratitude um, has gotten me through a lot of, of tough situations. Um, it's my easy button <laughs> in that yeah. it, you know, when you're in gratitude, it's really difficult to be in negativity in any of those, you know, down spiraling emotions. It's really, um, it's my go-to attitude to stay positive. Yes, it's, it is. It's all about your attitude and to get through. Um, well, it adjusts your perspective on how to look at things. It does. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, um, Mary crafts. Don't know if you know that name. She says gratitude is a practice, not just a feeling. I love that. I, I love when I heard her say that I thought, Oh, you're right. It is a practice. You have to, well, it actually, they, they've done studies and <laughs> gratitude. Actually, the more you practice it, the more, <laughs> positive you'll get and the more uh, observant you will be of more things to be grateful for it actually changes uh, the chemistry in your brain exactly so it's it's yeah. it is a practice and I love it I just yeah that was awesome let me just check just to make sure anybody let's see Linda Nelson says I love that you use gratitude to get through that tough situation absolutely absolutely well, I think at one time um, when I was talking to Julie, um, you know, we were talking about my operation and, and the fact that, you know, I've been managing Crohn's disease for 30 years and um, you have a choice, right? You can either say poor me and be the victim 
-hmm. and be down in the negativity dumpy dumps. Or you can make a choice to say, what can I learn from this? How can I move forward? And how can I have a happy, smooth life? And gratitude gives you that happy, smooth kind of ease, right. even when you're meeting into, you know, some challenges and some setbacks. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Now, one of the things that I, I looked up for us, uh, for everyone, uh, I looked for a crystal and an oil to help with anxiety of not knowing what may come, you know, that unexpected. And amethyst, I have a really nice amethyst. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I got this. Mine's just a tiny one. <laughs> well, I looked out, um, before we moved here, I used to do yoga and oils with a friend at this really cool garden place. But it was also a restaurant. So it was a rest, like a cafe. And then it also sold plants. And then she would have really cool stones sprinkled through. She had all kinds of like fun things. And very reasonable. Because she didn't care about selling this stuff. She was more concerned about the restaurant and um, the plants. So... I lucked out. I have an, an, a citrine that's big like this too. Gorgeous. I know. It's beautiful. So amethyst. So I looked this up for everybody. Um, so the next time you find yourself in a worrying situation, try holding an amethyst, you know, to help um, ensure that emotional stability and, and help you calm your mind so you could do an affirmation at the same time while you're holding it um and i read amethyst has become this essential you know for collectors due to its ability to bring um about the calmness and tranquility of its beholder i'm trying to remember what book that i grabbed that from um and it's polarized um for relieving stress and strain while bringing about sense of clarity and balance. Now, I think I, I'm not positive, but I think I grabbed that out of this crystals for beginners. I'm not positive. I usually write down a note to myself, but I guess I forgot and I didn't do that. Well, you're um, busy healing this week. That's why. <laughs> yes, I was. And I have been saying a lot of, you know, given a lot of gratitude about my health. Um, <laughs> so, um, so as far as oils are concerned, um, eucalyptus, which was very interesting because you associate eucalyptus with, um, you know, with breathing, you know, helping you breathe better. Um, but so they, it, I found um, that, the aroma of eucalyptus demonstrates its powerful effect on the physical and emotional bodies. Um, and it supports the soul who is facing an illness, whatever it may be. So it encourages individuals to take full responsibility for their health and bestows trust that individuals need and desires can be met, even if they call themselves I'm well, I'm fine, I'm good. So finally, eucalyptus teaches individuals how to claim their wholeness and heal. And I had to be reminded of this this week. Um, take responsibility for my health. Um, I've been so sick this past week, and it's my fault for not being consistent with my vitamins and my allergy supplements. I've been so lazy. So when I don't take certain things, when I'm going outside, I pay for this dearly, especially here in Florida. So of course, um, it's an inescapable that I will develop a respiratory issue. It never fails. And yes, I'm feeling so much better <laughs> once I put myself on a protocol, but if I had been responsible for taking everything I needed to do beforehand, I would be in a much better shape. So 
I am grateful that I'm a healthy person and I know what to do when I feel sick. So every morning now, I repeat, I am happy and thankful for the gift of health that keeps me alive. So that I have, I, I typed it right out and it's the first thing that I start reading in the morning now. Um, so it goes back to with Mary Crafts saying, you know, gratitude is a practice, not just a feeling. So that is in my practice. That's in my routine. I'm just going to check to make sure. Well, and I, I find the reason that I got into self-care is that it helped me heal from um, this chronic condition that I manage. And um, absolutely, I'm responsible. Certainly, the autoimmune that I have, it was probably switched on because of all the stress that I had in my life, in my corporate life, in my, you know, my working life. Um, and I found, I found that I could empower myself and take responsibility for my health. Yes, obviously it's complementary to the medical system that I have to visit now and then, but, um, you know, when the doctor sends you home and says, you know, take care of yourself, they don't give you, this is what you do, right? <laughs> so, right. and inherently we probably know how to do that if we really listen to our bodies, but in modern age, we don't listen to our bodies unless you take the time out to sit quiet and listen. So um, it was fascinating to me when I healed myself after that last, um, that last surgery, because they said it was going to be about 18 months before I was back to feeling normal. And I actually did a bunch of research because I had nothing else to do but sit on my butt and rest. Um, but I did lots of research saying, okay, here I am, you know, at the time I was going to be 60 years old and thinking, I want to live till I'm 100 or older, if that's possible, as long as I'm healthy. Um, it gave me two things. One, you can't have anything else if you don't have your health. Because if you're feeling sick, like you felt this week, you don't feel like doing anything. Right. And you don't have the energy to do anything. Mm -mm. And and the second thing is that I'm empowered to, to look after the, the things that give my body what it needs to stay healthy because your body is smart. It's a, it's miraculous, but it knows how to heal itself if you give it the things it needs and the time that it needs to heal. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm really passionate about having self-care in my life. Yes. And I know that I, um, your, your talks are amazing and Thank yeah, you. they really are. And, um, and I hope people, contact you because you know it's not just for women over 50 i mean all ages could benefit from what sabrina offers and you do give value valuable information and i've learned a lot from you i'm not a science person but i know you <laughs> love that sort of thing but well, it backs up what i you know it, it supports it does. and the, you know i'll be reading something oh i know i should tell people that but I don't know. <laughs> They're going to know that I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but you do, you know, because you really do the research and I love that, but the science stuff is not my, my thing and I'm okay with it. You know, it's like, I don't need to ask the universe to bestow that on me. <laughs> that is not my zone of genius, but it is yours. And I love that about, about you. Thank yes, you. this was just so great. So, um, some footy notes. Um, make sure you add uh, November 17th, Thursday, November 17th to your calendar. We may have our Sherry Godfrey who uh, will read her gratitude story. Um, she's supposed to get back to me on that. And our lovely Linda Nelson will share her story. And it will not be on Thursday, the 24th, because that's our Thanksgiving day in the States. So it will be Wednesday, November 23rd. So just mark your calendars, put it in your phone so that, you know, you're not expecting to see Linda on Thursday because Linda, the two of us will be eating turkey. Exactly. <laughs> I've already had my turkey up here. We had it last month. 
I know. And I was thinking about that. I said, I wonder why we have two separate. I said, they should really just combine the two. It's so funny. I don't know who came up with that one. But anyway, um, so remember, we meet at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. p.m. Pacific. And you know, ladies, somebody asked me to say, Footy, you don't have to tell all the, the uh, times. Yes, I do, because it's reinforcing that in my brain, because the more I say it, then I will remember myself because, I mean, I won't forget that it's eight o'clock, but I forget about everybody else's time zones. I'm really getting that down packed. Yes. And tomorrow is our Veterans Day. Is it Veterans Day? In yes. We call it Remembrance Day here in Alberta, or in, in Canada. Okay. It's Remembrance Day. That makes yeah. sense then. Okay. So. We didn't get our flags out for display. We usually line our driveway with our flags, but um, we were afraid they'd be blown away, and they would have been. <laughs> <laughs> the wind was pretty relentless. Um, so, um, so enjoy tomorrow with your families and celebrating your family and friend veterans. Um, they all deserve more than just a thank you for their service because we're so we're in such a habit of saying that when we see a veteran, but they really deserve so much more from us. Um, I know we are taking our friends George and Donna to Cody's. We ne we never do this, but this is our second year in a row where um, you know restaurants will have a free lunch and. George gets such a kick out of doing this. So Roger and I now, we just take them. And uh, and Cody's, they know us, so it all works out really great. And actually, we end up giving more money, you know, to the waiter. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. But it's really kind of a fun thing for us now. But the funny note on that, since I have not been you know, myself all week. Um, I, I don't remember. My husband would probably tell us, I believe it was Tuesday that I had it in my head that it was Veterans Day. And I called him and he had taken George to the doctors. And I said, oh my gosh, now, do you want me to pick up Donna and bring her to the restaurant while you meet us there? Oh, I didn't think of yeah, it's Veterans Day. And I didn't tell anybody to wear their red, white, and blue. And we get there. And of course, we're all telling Danny, our waiter, what we want. And he looks at us and he goes, look at the sign. We read the sign. Yeah, Veterans Day lunch. And he goes, okay, now read the sign. Still, none of us were getting it, you know, that it was not today. It was going to be Friday. Yeah. We have yeah. had the biggest laugh. So Roger said, the funny thing is, we all listened to you. We all got <laughs> up and we, we said, Linda said. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got to be right. Well, I, I call that uh, retired brain because um, after two years sorry. being retired, every day seems like the next. And I forget what day is a holiday and what day isn't a holiday. It all feels the same. <laughs> I mean, I was at an appointment today. Today was one of my infusion appointments that I have every eight weeks. And um, the nurse said to me, so what are you doing for the weekend? Because it's a long weekend for her, right? And I said, oh, <laughs> the same everything that I do on most weekends. <laughs> Nothing special. <laughs> oh, <Anyways>. gosh. <laughs> it's all pretty old. Oh God! No, it's, awful. it's it's fun growing old. It's a privilege and a gift that you get. Yeah, to it is. And everybody just them. has to get on board and deal with us. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure to be here with you oh, during your tea time. You. Yes, thank you. It was. It was great. I just enjoyed this so much. We'll have to think of something else. I'll have to brainstorm. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, thank you for coming on and taking the My time. Pleasure. Thank you, everyone else, for joining us this evening. Um, this has just been so much fun. So enjoy the rest of your day or evening or afternoon. And don't forget to spread kindness throughout your day. I'm just awesome. 
Yes, I can't wait for tomorrow. It'll be a beautiful day tomorrow. The Enjoy your night. lunch tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone.